referred to this computer. So yeah, welcome everybody. So my name is Eric Olson. We're gonna go ahead and get started with this uh, session. This is, how is virtual better? So um, we're gonna be working a little bit. Um, we're um, trying to make virtual, or, or we're gonna talk about how virtual can be better. Uh, one of the things that I started feeling as we got into this whole COVID period was there was a lot of griping and complaining about how, boy, we can't talk to people face to face. We're in meetings, we can't see their body language, you know, and it's so different. Um, but I started to think and, and started to keep a little note on the side of my computer and started to keep notes on how virtual could be better. And as I've um, done that, it actually helped me sort of buy into the fact that that we can get some really cool things done with uh, virtual being better. I was just talking to, to Stu earlier on uh, as we came on and he was talking about, you know, he's in the chancellor's office, I guess, at the University of Lincoln and he never got visitors before, right? And now he's getting visitors because people can zoom in and, uh, and talk to him at the improvement office, right? So, it's, so there are some advantages. I want you to start thinking about that and recognizing that, okay? So we've got some instructions in the chat room on how to get to various places and, and to set yourself up to really access all the capabilities that we have available in this virtual world. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and share screen and take you to our Miro board. So let's see, I'm going to do share and you're going to pop in and see my email quickly. So um, I'm gonna take, uh, if, if you go over and you click that link and go over to Miro board, you'll be able to see this. Ooh, that doesn't look good. So it looks like I've got some overlay and I think I know how to do that. Let me see if I can fix that. Hang on a second. There we go. All right, so as I said, I'm a little bit new to Miro, trying to figure out how to use it myself. So, um, so if you go over to that mural link and my able body assistant should be putting that in chat. Um, we're, uh, we, we should be there. So this is the, the welcome period. And I've got another couple minutes to make sure everybody's arriving and, and getting here. So one of my, one of my best practices within meetings is I try to have a, a little sort of pre session before the meeting starts. So we do usually do about 15 minutes uh, so people can arrive, get settled, and we can do a, a hard start maybe at the top of the hour, which is what we did. But I'm allowing a little extra five minutes for people to get settled here um, and prepare to participate in the meeting. So check out those instructions in chat, um, copy those instructions to your uh, clipboard if you'd like. Um, those can be helpful instructions for your own meetings that you can use in the future. Um, and uh, we've got a couple people who have volunteered to help us out by being co-hosts, another best practice in meetings. Um, I think there should be more co-hosts rather than less in a meeting, right? So if you're the only person hosting and you got all this responsibility on you, having a few co-hosts helps out. Usually when I do my meetings with my students and classes, um, I will ask early arriver students to be volunteer to be co-hosts and they're co-hosts in the meeting, just like my student assistants here. Um, it's, uh, it's nice. So ultimately welcome to everybody. And we're gonna be taking a break from complaining about being stuck, in, stuck online and look at the other side. One of, the, um, one of the features, I'm gonna demonstrate this on Miro because this is gonna be something you're gonna need to do and will be real helpful for you. You've got a lot of freedom in Miro <laughs> to go and explore this board. So it's a big limitless you know, whiteboard there. Um, in order to get us uh, focused and centered though, um, down here in this lower left-hand corner, if it's not already expanded, you can expand a little toolbar on the bottom one of the things on a toolbar is this thing called frames. And if you click on that little thing all the way over to the far left, you're gonna pop up um, what Miro calls frames and it allows you to visit different specific areas on the whiteboard, okay? 
So I'm gonna start off, so I'm, I'm already at this first frame. This is the welcome frame. I've got my slides set up on all these frames. So now I'm on this better online meetings. And one of the things we can do is time constrain things a little bit better in the virtual world than in a, maybe in a normal meeting. So I'm gonna ask uh, Will or Emily, could you put three minutes on the clock here? And we're gonna go ahead and uh, there's a little clock in the bottom there, toolbar. Let's see if this happens. And I'm purposely slowing down, there we go, okay. So we can have a little timer in the bottom here. So I set allotted three minutes for this to make sure everybody's um, set up. And you can also um, access Miro. So as I said, we put this Miro link on your, um, in the chat. So if you go to that Miro link, you can get on there and you can explore Miro. And if this is your first exposure, that's great. Um, let's do something real quick during this, this three minute period of time. If you can find your chat button, okay? So everybody find, uh, find chat, um, open up your chat window and in your chat, and uh, I should do that myself since I don't have my chat window open. And by the way, I'm not a great multitasker. <laughs> And what that means is uh, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a couple of students helping me out reading the chat. And I'm going to ask them to flag me if something important comes across that I should be aware of. Um, private chat, when we're trying to do these big meetings and, and facilitate, we had a, uh, about 100 and 140 people uh, sign up for this. The fact that we've got about a 50% level going is pretty good, I think, for the way these sort of free sessions go. Um, but if you're private chatting to me, and I'm not responding. It's not because I'm disrespecting you. It's because uh, I can't I can't talk and chat at the same time. I apologize for that. Um, okay, so, um, so hopefully everybody's access. So what I want you to do in the chat now that it's open. Um, if your experience or, or um, give me give me a sort of a let's say a, a one to five on Miro. So um, if you're a, a very experienced with Miro, give me a five, I'll put a five in chat. And if you're not so experienced in Miro, go ahead and put down a one. So let's uh, get some fours, good, some twos, good. Some ones, okay. All right, cool. This is also another um, thing that I like to do. I, I've been into some virtual meetings where they're doing a lot of things with polling and all of a sudden the poll pops up. To me, it's, it's a little bit distracting. I think having people do these sort of quick sort of poll things in the chat actually gives people a sense of interaction, engagement, and um, a little bit better feeling, okay? All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and Can you move show on. Us one more time where we open chat because I have the notes panel covering all that for my session. Ah, yeah. So, um, so if you go to the Zoom toolbar and you get the Zoom screen up, you should see the uh, there should be a chat button along with participants down at the bottom somewhere. Okay. On the Zoom, yeah. So if you oh, the, you're doing that. the chat in Zoom, not inside of Miro. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. No problem. Okay, good, good point. You want know, to make sure we, we know sort of where we are. So um, I'm going to go down to um, the next slide. So here's the, the agenda. So I think a good practice in meetings is to um, you know, give people a little idea where we're going. Um, I have a co-facilitator for some of the lean training and things that we do at Cal Poly, uh, Wes Love, and I'm going to uh, steal this from him. So he says, you should be not be in love with your process, be in love with having a process. So I have a process. This is the process that you see listed down here. Um, I'm not necessarily in love with it. Uh, we're gonna see if it works, it works. If not, if uh, not. But we're gonna, we're gonna start out, we're doing the, uh, we did the welcome. We did some things about better online meetings. Hopefully we're geared for that. Um, I'm going to talk about the agenda for a couple minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to move to this. We're going to do an impromptu uh, networking exercise where I get you guys to interact um, 
and we'll be putting you into breakouts to make that happen. We're then going to be doing a big, um, and that's not necessarily on Miro. Um, on, we're going to do a brainstorming exercise. We're going to be creating sticky notes on Miro and putting them on this virtual whiteboard. So that'll be there. We're going to be doing something called messy mapping, which is really just another name for an affinity diagram. Those of you in uh, lean and no lean tools and um, continuous improvement tools, affinity diagramming is a, is a big workhorse for us. Um, we're then going to try to take that and move that over and do some classification. Um, and we'll do a little impact effort matrix, um, hopefully, if we get that far. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. I also want to call your attention to these little blue boxes. So as I said, I've been, um, since COVID started, I've been keeping a list of all the things, the ways I think that virtual is better. And yeah, yes. my, my list is now up to about um, 54 items that I've gotten. And so what I did is rather than showing you the list of 54 items, I have um, uh, put those, some of those items in these blue boxes and so the fact is that in Zoom land or virtual land, meetings can be better time constrained. And I'm getting this yes. little popping box on the bottom here showing me that I'm done with uh, how long I was supposed to talk about this. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. But you might want to check out these boxes, uh, the blue boxes or something. Eric, you're muted. You're muted. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, one of the things you could do with Zoom is better is your host can mute you, right? So if you got a lot of distracted conversations going on, you can mute. It tends to be a little bit more of a focusing thing. So I was telling people, uh, hopefully you got that, these blue boxes are some of the ways that I think that um, virtual is better, okay? So we're gonna go ahead now and um, looks like a guest started a clock there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask uh, Emily, can you, can you close that clock? Is that, is, is, can anybody, um, timer has been stopped by guests. Okay, cool. All right, we're all learning. This is a cool experiment. Let's see what you, you know, there's things I know I can do. There's things that uh, I think you can do. I'm not, not sure though. All right, so here's the impromptu networking exercises. So. Um, considering all the capabilities available online, technology or limitations of physical meetings, I want to know what's made better in virtual meetings. How has your life maybe improved a little bit um, by going for meetings? And we're going to try to scope this so that we're going to focus for the purpose of this exercise. Think about a business meeting. So think about the meetings you go to in your work. All right. So we're going to start out, this is part of an impromptu networking uh, practice. We're going to start out with what I call a little bit of introvert time. So I'm going to give you 60 seconds to think of a response, right, to this. So if we're going to put you in breakout groups with people from all over the world here, um, you know, I want you to think of a response. How is virtual made your life better? Or what aspect? And you can get as big or as small as you want on these, right? It could be the little things, you know, easier bathroom breaks, whatever. All right, so we'll do three rounds of three minute random breakouts. Emily, you're gonna go ahead and set us up for that. Um, let's go ahead and set it up so it's, uh, um, we give them a two minute um, with a, a 60 second exit. So Zoom allows you to do the, you know, set up how you do your breakout room. So you'll get a two minute breakout and, but we'll give you 60 minutes to get back in. So you'll get a 60 minute warning, all right? And in there, I want you to introduce yourselves and then share ways that virtual is better. Okay, so different timer here. I wanna give you a 60 seconds. So I'm gonna close this timer here. Or, or let's see, so there's 60 seconds. So I'm timing on my own watch. Think of your response. Um, Dr. Wilson there, I jumped again a little bit. So they're in their breakout rooms thinking of their responses. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it'll so send them back. 
no, no, we'll send them back in just a yeah yeah that, that, that's all right we'll we'll explain what happened so yeah it'll yeah, it'll send them back in 30 seconds and then they'll go back in for an afternoon oh, okay so it's not an automatic cycle um no it's okay. just you put pretty... what i'm manually doing okay. we just have a lot of people coming in and out yeah 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 Okay, so welcome. We're doing some breakout group <laughs> exercises. Um, if you've got a, for the people that are arriving now, um, if you've got a message there to join a breakout room, go ahead and join it. Is everybody coming back? Looks like it. <laughs> okay, so there's a there's a little virtual experience for you. So let's see. We'll wait till is, is everybody Emily? Tell me when everybody's back so I can go ahead and speak. They're all back. Okay, good. All right. So that was the first virtual experience. Um, so we jumped the gun a little bit on putting you in the breakout rooms. I don't know as we everybody finished thinking and stuff, but that's the deal. So we're going to be putting you in these breakout rooms. You're going to go ahead and talk to the people in your breakout rooms, hopefully meet a, a few new folks um, each time and share with them, uh, introduce yourselves and share with them how you think virtual is better or what ways is virtual better. Okay, so Emily, what's tell Emily? Tell me what the uh, the parameters on a breakout room. How's this going to work? Okay, so we should have uh, should be two to three people in every breakout room, and then I'll send them in for two minutes, and then we'll have sixty seconds to rejoin the meeting for a total of three minutes. Okay, there you go. You got three minutes. So go ahead, Emily. Two more times. Ready? Go. All right. Looks like we got everybody this time. Way to go. There's people coming in and out. Like every few seconds, someone new pops up. I know. And someone leaves. Yeah. <laughs> I just hope no one's in a breakout room by themselves. It looks like we're good. We're back. We're back. Okay. <laughs> Our so final just... went to zero, so we thought we were supposed to be back. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. It gives you 60 seconds to rejoin. Yeah. yeah, everybody has six quick minutes. sessions. Yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll wait for everybody to come on back. So, so the people that are coming back now are the people that come back at the two minute mark, Emily, as opposed to waiting 60 seconds? Yeah, there's 20 seconds left in that 60 second chunk. Okay, okay. All so, right. all right. They can. Go to the very last second in their room if they'd like, or jump back early. Okay, good. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Yeah, good. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks yeah. for uh, thanks for showing up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've been trying to play around with Miro too, and yeah, I'm excited to learn more. <laughs> yeah, so we're uh, we're all learning here. So yeah. Okay, so um, is it is everybody back, Emily? Hello. <laughs> hey. Yes, everyone's back. Okay, hi, welcome back. So, so uh, my co-facilitators uh, Emily and, and Will informed me that that first round was a little short. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, two more rounds. And so let's go ahead and put them back in there. Find uh, find some more friends and and share how you think virtual has made your life better, or ways virtual is better. Okay, let's go ahead and put them in uh, another round. Hey Beth, did, uh, did you get stranded in a breakout room? Oh. Um, I did earlier. No, um, Francesca, who I was with, uh, had mute issues, so we couldn't talk. So we we tried to talk to each other, but it didn't work. So we thought we'd uh, come back. <laughs> well, we're always happy to talk to you. You can always come. Oh, that's back. nice. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the the uh, upper level breakout room for the for, really, for the really <laughs> cool kids, right? The, oh, thank the, you. Yeah, yeah. Good to be one of those. <laughs> So let's see. So we got uh, okay. So the UK is pretty strongly in the house. Um, so Francesca, how how are things in uh, in Italy? Oh, oh, we're having muting or. Uh, oh no, not here too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sure. Okay, um, they so all just oh, got their sixty second warning. Okay. So let's see. So what are the what are the tricks on fixing the the mute thing? So if you hover over the um, the lower left hand corner of your screen, 
you should see a little microphone icon and that's your sort of mute and unmute next to it is a little arrow that um, a little up arrow so if you push on that up arrow you can see like what microphone zoom thinks you're using or what microphones you th zoom thinks you have available okay and uh Let's see. And, and Emily and Will, did I, I don't want to lose count. So we said one more time. Is that the deal? Yeah, they have one more little okay. um, All right. networking session. Okay. Hope this time no one gets left alone in their room. <laughs> okay. So let's see. So we're still trying to help. Okay. We run back again. Okay. Okay. So here we are. Okay. Right. It looks like 60 is the magic number. So you can watch like how many participants there are in the bottom bar there. So we got 60. So once we get 60, well, 61. <laughs> now we, uh, we just got one more round. So one more, and then we're gonna ask you to recognize common themes that you talked about or common ways that, that virtual is better. And we're gonna ask you to type those into the chat when you come back. Okay, so last round, here you go. Okay. And if you want to stay at the top level and you need some help with some technical things or accessing some of the stuff, feel free to hang back and we'll try to help you out if we can. Okay. Everyone I know has had really um, bad troubles with the internet the last two days. I think this event's just broken the world's internet. <laughs> <laughs> now the internet's broken. The end. Oh, no. Yeah. Now we're, we're trying. We, yeah. So, so one, of, one of the things, Gene, is like, so we, Emily, Will, and I, in my class, we do 90 students two days a week on Zoom. So we get to see the, the range of gamut of problems. So hopefully we can work our way through this. Good to see I saw my... Uh... Excuse me, Eric, I'm a bit lost what, um, what I'm supposed to be looking for to do now. I'm seeing people gradually disappearing and thinking, where should I be? Uh, well, yeah. You should get an invitation. It just might be slightly delayed due to the large numbers of people we got coming in and out. Yeah. Well, well, welcome back. That, that, was, uh, that was interesting. Welcome back. Um, yeah, we were talking uh, about uh, some of the functionality with breakout rooms and trying to troubleshoot. Uh, one, one of the things that we have a little bit maybe of an edge. So since well, even before COVID advanced. So, so I've been like three years using Zoom in my classes and whatnot. And every week we do 90 students on Zoom um, twice a week for classes. And we have seen the gamut of problems and situations and things. So uh, I don't wanna say you're in good hands, but uh, you're, you're in experienced hands as far as these things go. And um, hopefully it wasn't too disconcerting some of the little delays and stickiness in that breakout exercise. But it's a good thing to do, um, I think, in meetings. Um, if you look at how easy it is to transition into breakout rooms, you can imagine in the physical world trying to do that sort of thing would be um, a little bit of a logistical uh, problem, OK? So with that, what I want you to do now in the chat room, and this is Zoom chat, go ahead in the chat room. And I'm going to ask you to compose your answer. Don't hit send. So we're going to do a little process called Mad T, right? And, and this eliminates some of the bias on responses. So type into the chat room and make sure you're chatting to everybody. So if you go into your chat, make sure your, your chat is set to everyone. It's at the top of the chat list in the pull down menu. And compose what sort of common themes or common ideas on how virtual is better did you come across in those breakout rooms? So what were some of the common ideas or common ways that you heard? And go ahead and compose your answer in the chat. Don't hit send or don't hit enter, okay? So we always have a little bit of a seven. So yeah, don't hit enter. Just, just kind of compose your answer. We got a few in there already, all right? I don't wanna bias you with uh, the standard answers that other people are giving. So just hold on, just compose your answer in the chat. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a little countdown. So three, two, one, hit send. Okay, 
So you got a huge scroll now of, of ways that uh, people and insights that they took away. This is a real good way to sort of capture information if you're in meetings and virtual meetings. We don't really get this sort of commonality of comparison in the, in the real world. Um, you can, if, you're, uh, if you would like to, um, you can copy the chat. So if you go over into your little chat box and then over all the way to the right hand side, you'll see the little um, square box with the three dots in it. And if you click on that three dot box, you can do save chat. Okay, so it saves that whole chat as a text file. It's a, it's a great way to automatically take notes during a meeting. Okay, so that's another way that the virtual is better. We don't, in, in a lot of ways too, I'm talking about the way virtual is better. Maybe we need to modify that to virtual can be better, right? And, and the reason I say that, if you don't use the chat for your meetings or you don't try to access the virtual functionality, you're not gonna get the benefit. It's there, right? And it's sort of similar to when we see, um, you know, how do we see Muda or waste and lean? You know, we get these, you know, uh, lean eyes or lean ways to see. We gotta start seeing what's there in the virtual world in addition to what we uh, normally do, okay? So thank you for um, sharing some of those things. I'm gonna go ahead and move on because we're now, we're now primed, right? We're, our head is in the space. It's okay, how is virtual better? Let me, let me see what that looks like. We should all be primed for that now. And let's see, uh, let's see what we can come up with. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm now, uh, we're on the Miro board. So go ahead and put that Miro link back in the, um, in the chat. So we make sure everybody, who's now arrived and getting ready, run that mural board. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my Zoom open. And so I'm not gonna share this, but I'm hopefully you're seeing this on the mural board. So I'm now gonna go, that's the impromptu exercise. I'm gonna go to frame number five on the mural board, and I'm gonna bring everybody to me, right? So if you were wandering around the mural board, there's a great function in Miro that allows me to pull everybody back to what the facilitators looking at. And so we're gonna now try a brainstorming exercise with sticky notes in Miro. So sticky notes or post-it notes in Miro. Um, so this is one of the ways virtual is better is that everybody can access the virtual whiteboard or flip chart. So there are programs like Miro out there that you can use and you can get everybody working simultaneously on the same page, right? Um, Similarly, things like uh, Google Docs, where everybody can jointly edit or a Google spreadsheet at the same time, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put you in random breakouts, and this time it's gonna be like four or five people in a breakout. I want you to make sure you remember your breakout room number, okay? So remember your breakout room number. That's one of your responsibilities, right? So when you put you in here, remember the number. You're gonna go, um, once you're in your breakouts, go to the Miro breakout area. So I'm gonna share screen with you once again. And I'm sharing my Miro board. And if you go to this lower left-hand corner on Miro, so I'm down here, right? You can see my cursor moving in the lower left-hand corner, right? Click on your, your frames icon and when you go into the mural, if you got a breakout room, say you were breakout room number uh, number five, I want you to go down and find a set of sticky notes. There's a frame called breakout room five, and you'll be in breakout room number five with the mural board. And we've given you some post-it notes that you can go around and, and write on. So we're gonna ask you to brainstorm ways that virtual is better and put it on these little sticky notes in your breakout area, okay? All right, so this breakout um, area or this little area on Miro is pretty big. So this is kind of what we're, we're looking at, 
And let me uh, let me see if I can undo that. Looks like somebody created a very big post-it note there in breakout room one. It's okay, we're all learning. Um, so so there's a big huge area here with um, with post-it notes, um, and you're going to go to those when we put you in the breakout rooms. All right. So with that, let me go back to my instruction frame five. And I'm gonna bring everybody here in case you guys have gotten off and wandering around in the wilderness there. So you're gonna brainstorm stickies in your area on Miro. Um, you're gonna put um, target about five ideas per, uh, per group and then um, Try to get just one idea only per sticky. Multiple ideas will make the sorting and affinity exercise a little bit um, more problematic. And then, um, let's see, what is it? If you have time, yeah, you can rate your ideas high impact to low impact. One asterisk for low, um, five for high if somebody wants to do that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing now at this point. Is everybody ready for this? We good? I'm not sure what we're supposed to be brainstorming about though. Sorry if okay. I missed that. Okay, yeah. So so you're gonna brainstorm about how is virtual better, right? How is virtual better? Same thing as the impromptu network. Now we're gonna really capture the ideas and ask you to kind of put those down on those stickies, okay? So brainstorm about how virtual is better. Emily, um, we're gonna go ahead and put them in breakout rooms. You're gonna go. Uh, you're gonna go be in there for about seven minutes, and then we're gonna give you a one-minute warning. Emily, does that does that get you enough information to do this? Yes, I think we're good to go. Okay, let's go into those breakout rooms. One note that I have for future um, workshops that we could try to figure out is so your box frames and post it yep. or frames if you can if we can lock them. Yeah, certain yeah. things because. Um, I eliminated breakout room one and two because two is gone um, on the Miro <laughs> and okay. one has some other things going on in it. So, so if you go to breakout room one on the frame, so can you did yeah. go someplace where you can find it? Yeah, you can see it. There's no one in breakout rooms one or two. We just have... Okay three through 15 because there's okay. like big green post-it and then two has been moved somewhere else. <laughs> Not okay. sure where it went, but it's, oh, it's down in the corner. So yeah, I just tried to put them in ones that were still intact yeah, yeah. fully. No, that, that's okay. And so there, um, let's, let's talk through this, right? So they're in, in these breakout rooms, they've done their, um, They've done their thing. They're going to create these. We're going to put them back in the same rooms in the next thing. And their job is to um, move their post-it notes into that affinity group area and put mm -hmm. similar post-it notes together, right? Is what they're going to do. Yeah. So we're going to put them back into the same room for the second thing. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try to delete some of that. There's just, I don't know if you have access to it, but there's, yeah, it looks like they're doing a ton of post-its. Yeah, there's one group that has, like, so it's interesting that someone's in breakout room one doing post-its because there's no breakout room one. <laughs> All right, like, in the square because that room doesn't exist. I deleted That's it. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> someone's just having a ball. Yeah, they're just going for it. <laughs> there's also no breakout room two. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> hey, uh, Emily and Will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could uh, could one of you create a um, create a frame over on the on the right far right hand side or something, and like lessons learned and things like that. So lock um, lock uh, objects is sort of one of them. Um, what else? Uh, I think another lesson is practice, create a practice area on Miro for things that you're going to ask people to do. 
So we can go ahead and, and do that kind of thing in the future. Okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe we could do it and just put post it notes up for those ideas in that area. Okay. That'd be good. Okay. Welcome back. Well, that was uh, that was exciting. It was interesting. So I uh, sort of stepped back at the at the high level and watched people furiously create post-it notes. So one of the lessons I just learned is all you have to do is tell people, lean people, create post-it notes, and boy, they are on it, man. Lean people know how to create post-it notes, and so that's one of the things that we can leverage in the virtual world, right? So some things you want to be able to sort of take into the virtual world and maybe expand their capability. It's very easy to create post-it notes where you know you got to find markers and you know get the right size sharpie and things. In the virtual world, you know that goes away. And then there are also things in the in the real world that we don't want to you know take over, right? So there's some things that you know in the real world we don't want to import into the virtual world. And we want to use the opportunity, the fact that we're going virtual, um, people don't know exactly what's expected or not expected to really sort of set new expectations. So we're going to use that as a vehicle to set new expectations for people on how they work together, um, maybe to be more effective or more lean. All right. So with that now, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Miro board and I'm going to um, take us to the next step. So um, thanks for creating those post-it notes. Thanks for learning how to create more post-it notes than we gave you. That's good. Um, so I'm now going to move down and here's what, you know, that sort of total field. Um, you guys did some really cool work there. We're going to put you back in the same groups now to go in because we're going to do the next step. Now we need to do an affinity diagram or some messy mapping, right? And what we want to do is we want to move similar ideas closer to each other in the affinity area, right? We're going to create affinity groups or we want to put similar stickies together. So you're not communicating directly. So this is silently. Everybody's just going to move post-it notes. So if you find a significant uh, match um, and it's like, oh, this is like one for one, these two ideas, just put the sticky on top of the other sticky. Or you know, overlap corners or edges on stickies that are strongly related in the um, improvement or benefit that you get from being virtual. All right. So be respectful. Um, there could be some sticky battles going on here as people move things back and forth, but eventually we're going to try to seek a consensus. So you might want to work as a team. So your team of four or five, um, one team member can scan. And one person could be responsible for moving your post-it notes over to the area. So the area that we're going to move, and I'm going to go ahead and share screen here once again, so that we kind of get this. So I'm going to I'm going to zoom out here. So we're going from this post-it note area here in the center to here's our affinity diagram area. So we're just going to find find a little area. Put your notes over there and start moving your notes um, to like or similar groups, all right? So if you want to get to this affinity area, if you go over to your frames area and click over here, here's your affinity area that we're going to be putting these things in. There you go. And then um, here's the dot. So we're going to go ahead and put you in breakout groups to do this. So Emily, go ahead and put them in breakout groups. And how much time are we giving them this time? I think we're going five minutes with a 50 second close. Okay, five minutes, 50 second close. So go for it. So stop share, back in your breakout groups. And that's the only thing I added to our lessons learned. The timer in, in red in parentheses at the top of each slide, does that start when you start talking about the slide or when we start doing that activity? It, it was meant to when I started talking about the slide. And, and we ought to have separate times for the activities, right? So within that, because I, I need that overhead to explain to people, you know, mm -hmm. so maybe two minute explanation and then five minutes in a breakout or whatever, but that's all right. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking about that either. So thanks for putting that note down. Yeah. Um, you might want to uh, into the um, joint message you might want to tell people that they can um, zoom 
in and out on Miro if, if they're having trouble reading little tiny sticky notes. I don't, because it looks like we got some clustering in that upper left hand corner on the, and Emily, I think, I think you're right. I don't think there's, uh, there's enough time. So we're, we're just gonna go ahead and talk through the end here and we'll- uh, Okay, yeah, I think yeah. I'm gonna do. Yeah, I, didn't, I can see the panic in, in your face, you know, when I was talking about like trying to get all this extra stuff done. So let's just, let's just relax. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, is everybody back now, Emily? Um, uh, yes, everyone's back. Okay, all right, so welcome back. So, uh, so that was interesting. Um, it was particularly interesting. I don't know if you had a chance to do it, but sort of stepping back and Miro, and I'm going to go ahead and share screens that sort of talk about this a little bit. Um, so, you know, looking at you guys doing all this work on these boards and moving these posts around, it was really kind of interesting. It looks like we're, we're about out of time. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you for, for these ideas. I'm looking at these ideas and um, I just, you know, zoned in on, on one post-it note that said, well, maybe tougher conversations are easier to have virtually, right? And I said, yeah, you know, I, um, I hate those tough conversations, but, you know, maybe, maybe in a virtual environment, there's some ways that we can make those things easier. So, so thank you for sharing that. The way I'd sort of planned, if I was hitting my time targets the way I should have been, would be we would do this affinity diagram um, you can see I had Emily put little numbers around some of the different groups. And then I was going to have people do you know, random breakouts based on the number of affinity groups and assign each group an affinity group to name the affinity group. Like what, what is common about these post-it notes, right? So we're going to name the affinity group. And then I was going to take you over to an impact effort matrix and then say for um, each affinity group, you know, put them on this impact effort group. Like what is really hard to do in virtual, but has a really big impact or what's easy to do in virtual, right? It's sort of a natural extension of what we already do, but has a really big impact. And of course, you know, we're always, um, we're always kind of wanting to, to, to sort of be in this, this upper square here, right? Um, where, um, where we got this high impact, low effort. So that was what the exercise was meaning to do. I will now have the homework to try to prepare those sorts of things at the end. It has been really very good. Um, thank you for, for being here. I'd like to as one sort of parting shot, if we do this, um, we'll do another mad tea. So in the chat room, what I want you to do is compose your answer, right? So think about this. What was your biggest insight or takeaway from participating in this workshop? And I'm gonna ask you to exclude the fact that there wasn't enough time, right? Cause I, I realized that. And I'm gonna take the blame for that from a time uh, management standpoint. But think of a response, okay? I'm gonna give you a less than a minute. So go ahead and think, put a response. And then I'm gonna go ahead and count you down. Three, two, one, go ahead and hit send. All right, so hit that send in chat. And that's it for this presentation. So one of the best practices in meetings that um, I like to share is um, give people an escape route, right? So, you know, if you've got a meeting, don't, don't hold people hostage. This is a time to escape. Turn on your video, do a little sort of buy, you know, I got to go, right? If you got to, you got to leave, that's fine. Another best practice though is we'll stick around. I'm going to stick around for another 15 minutes or whatever. If people want to chat or talk about that experience, um, I'm here and we can go ahead and do that. Um, also, just a shameless promotion, um, we've got a, a workshop that we're doing at Central Coast Lean. It's called uh, um, our uh, online live project simulation. If you check out this website, go to um, Central Coast Lean website and get to the workshops. You can find that out. 
and uh, hopefully you can maybe join us. Okay. So with that, um, I'm gonna stop share, Zoom wave. See you guys around. Thanks for participating in this. Okay. Also, Dr. Olson, we had a question about will they have access to the mirror board moving forward, whether we're just sending out screenshots or if it'll remain live. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and try to capture this. And there is a functionality where it'll put all those frames into a um, PDF. Uh, looks like we've got to do a little bit of cleanup work to make that a little bit more organized. So, so I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll go ahead and share that back with everybody that signed up for this particular session. Okay, good question. All right. Okay. Thank you all. Hope to hope to see you in another Zoom meeting sometime. Take care, everybody. All right. Bye bye. Thanks, Eric. All right. Thanks. See ya. Bye. Feel free to say bye. Turn on your microphone. That's good. Microphones are good. That's Eric, I really enjoyed question. this session. Thank you. Okay. Good. Good to see you here. I, I say that just because I've got a quick question for you, Eric, just because yeah. I'm curious. Yeah, go ahead, Jean. I thought it was really cool that you're saying um, students who turn up early, you know, the students themselves might not feel this way, so don't let me speak for them. But I thought it was really cool that you involved them in being hosts. I think there's a, a lot to, to be gained from that. I'm super curious. You know, I remember when I was at uni, sometimes my tutor had nine shoots in a row. I'm not joking. It was from midday until 9 p.m. class after class after class in the one classroom. And I, you know, I'm just, I'm feeling for how you manage that. If you've got similar back-to-back -back shoots, how do you manage if people are early, you know, do you pop them in a waiting room or like, 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 do you have techniques to do that? Cause it's one thing in a physical room where you can look in and see everyone's still busy and just hang on and you'll do the switcheroo but was just curious about that if that's something you've come across yeah no um it's funny we were just talking to that about that in a faculty meeting um yesterday so you know my general approach is <laughs> i use the same link for everything I, like so this is my channel so if you wanted to come to my class uh tomorrow afternoon 4 p.m pacific time we're going to be on this same zoom link Right, so it's, it's always the same. What do you it's teach? Same. Maybe I. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, you're welcome to show up. I, I don't know how much you'll learn, but um, I, I, I tend to like the model where people show up and, you know, they're respectful and they say, is it, is it okay if I listen in? Or I, I'll say, hey, I, I see you just walked in, you know, can I help you type thing? Mm -hmm. Similar to what I would do in an open door mm -hmm. office environment mm -hmm. is, is the way I do it. I know other professors were talking about, um, they will have office hours or, or they'll do that sort of thing. And then they'll say, I'm gonna create a breakout and you can control who goes into a breakout. So you can be in a breakout, you know, while the, the main mm -hmm. meeting is there. And if you're on the main meeting, you can put up a, a whiteboard message saying, I'm in a breakout, I'll be back in, in two minutes, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then come, come in and out of that breakout. Mm -hmm. And then you can control who goes in or who goes out. Um, I'm mm -hmm. not a big waiting room fan. I, I, I hate it when I'm in a waiting room in a Zoom meeting. I, mm -hmm. I don't like waiting rooms in real life. You know, mm -hmm. so you give me a, a Zoom waiting room and I'm thinking this is a double whammy. You know, mm -hmm. I, but, but anyway, that's, there you go, that was my- no. Thanks, that's a really, really thoughtful answer, so I'll, yeah. I'll keep that tattoo in the back of my mind. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think about this stuff a lot, you know, as we sort of go into here, it's, it's kind of an interesting, you know, as a Zoom, or, or not as a Zoom, but as a lean practitioner, right, we're always trying to go to Gimba. So this is like a new Gimba, and I'm looking around, saying, okay, well, what's what makes that work? What doesn't work? Why isn't that? What's the same? What's different? You know, all that kind of stuff, so interesting. All right. So, so Annette, I see, I see you, your, your, your head nodding. I always go for the head nodders, you know, it's just like in the real world. So are you, uh, are you resonating with some of this? Oh yes. I, I, I found it fascinating and I've taken quite a few ideas to do my own workshops and, yeah. and cause I was struggling, really struggling with this and how to get people engaged. Yeah. Um, and this is brilliant yeah. as far as that's concerned. So thank you.
Yeah, sure. Well, one of the things, uh, and we, we actually sort of did this on the fly. So Emily, you want to go ahead, can you screen share the, the lessons learned sort of thing? So as we were, yeah. as we were doing this, um, I asked Emily to go on the mural and create a frame over to the right hand side. So it should Sorry. I saw it. I popped my lesson learned before you told us to put oh. it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good, right. Yeah. So, um, so those are like, you know, just trying to capture some of those ideas. I think one of the big things is uh, we were um, running it around, you know, with, without the frames locked and people were accidentally moving the frames and, and doing those things. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of one way to, to, to make things work better. Yeah. Something that's relevant, and I'll probably drop off fairly soon after this, but yeah. people don't do what you tell them to do in breakout rooms. And I've been on a lot of different bits and pieces of training and things over the last several months, and they don't do it in real life either. You tell them to do an activity, but it's quite easy to move around a classroom and look at what's going on over yeah. there whilst you're over here. But it, it, it seems to me that you actually just need more facilitators when you're doing it online for various reasons. One, there's IT to troubleshoot. Two, there's this idea of breakout rooms are effective. You often really do need someone to, to be there monitoring, <laughs> keeping people on track or maybe yeah. not monitoring, you know, yeah. motivating. Um, but so I think I think that's the other thing for, for a reminder for me to not expect people are going to do what they're supposed to do <laughs> if they're not being yeah. monitored. Yeah. And you intend, like, I... I so I do this a lot and I try to get people and I do want people to do what I tell them to do. But I also recognize that you know, when I'm in those breakout room situations virtually, I'm probably one of the worst offenders, right? I'll see, well, well, the facilitator asks us to do X, but I think Y would be a better thing to do like in this breakout. And, you know, um, what, what is one of the saying is, is in a, in a world of the blind, you know, the one-eyed one -eyed, uh, one -eyed man is king, right? So if you're the one in the breakout room that sort of knows the functionality and knows that, well, yeah, the professor told us to do this, but we don't really have to do it, you know? It, it's, um, it's kind of liberating. Um, I don't know. It's, you recognize that that does happen, though. That's a big thing. Hey, Eric, what, um, what access level do you have in Miro? And because uh, when I was looking at it originally, I started to get discouraged because I was like, oh man, I, I can't afford to give uh, access. Yeah. You know, they have all these like tickets and all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, I mean, I'm not a professor, yeah. but I have the, you know. Well, you, you know, but. But this is a thing, Brian. So, so, so what Brian's talking about is, is Miro, there's a cost, right? But they have for, for educators, professors, it's free, right? So we but get to. You don't even need to be a professor. I just got an account yesterday. So yeah, just, I, I, just blab it. Yeah, I think, especially if you've got like an EDU or, or whatever the designation is at the end of your thing, they probably will give you a free thing. That's a yeah. good point. Okay. Or, or team with a professor and say, okay, what you know, can I can I get on and you know piggyback on your yeah, because when I was reading it, it says like each each person you want access to add to the you Five have to, or whatever. Yeah, individuals. And I was like, Are you crazy? I I work with you know 10 people a week. Yeah, yeah. And how, how many like I ain't never keep up with that. <laughs> like we were doing something like that. We were trying out Stormboard. Mm -hmm. and uh, which which this is the first time I've seen Miro and they seem very similar yeah. and I think we started with 15 licenses and every time um, we did a project we took back the license and reassigned them project by project but we were still in the prototype stage yeah. mm -hmm. so Miro the educational thing it asks you to have a screenshot to show your position with the institution and then something else to show that you're really an institution I asked a colleague who'd done it. She literally had a Word document with links to the website just proving we're a real university. Look, here's our charitable donation number, whatever. It was very dodgy, but it was enough. We just got it set up. I'm about to go and set it up now. Um, but you could also look into Mural, M-U-R-A-L. It's really, really similar to Miro. And I, I think I maybe like it a bit better, but I'm probably going to stick with Miro because it seems to be more yeah. established. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So I think, I, don't let I, it be a barrier if you're affiliated with an education 
get get it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tried other, so I was, we were using a thing called concept board, which is also another thing that's, you know, sort of very similar to, to Miro, but Miro seems to have a very good support, you know, capability, and they seem to be adding lots of new features continuously, they're a big user community, so, so I always, uh, I think that's how Google got to be so big, and, you know, I'm a Google guy too, and I hate the fact that they're a monopoly and, and, and whatnot, but Geez, you know, the, the services are pretty good, right? So, um, uh, can I ask? Yeah, go ahead, Anna. Um, when we saved the chat, where did it save to? <laughs> yeah, so, so if you have a, uh, I, I don't know, right? It's a little mystery. Um, so, when you save chat, um, I would type in like, do you have a search function on your computer? Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, well, let me, let me just sort of see what it says now. So, I go. The other piece, when I did my save chat, I got a little green box that said show folder. Right, right. That's that's if what I If you click on it, it'll it open up your file folder. Right. All right, we'll see you, Ryan. Mine, Take care. Thank you. My personal one stays to my iCloud drive. Within, within the folder documents, there's a Zoom document in every, anything, anything that I've saved from Zoom ever is, has its own date uh dated folder within there yeah ah. it has yeah folder, right? I, I, I apparently have a zoom folder too <laughs> <laughs> the more you know yeah i'll tell you um let's see so thank I, you see. yeah i was gonna say i could yeah i don't know it's, it's good you can also cut and paste from your chat too um you know copy it to your clipboard and paste it somewhere especially if there's a a subsection of the chat that you think is going to be useful. You might want to try that. That's good. So, Annette, what are you what are you doing real in the real world? In the real world, um, for a start, I live in um, sunny England, ah. right in the middle, <laughs> um, and um, I do lean and projects. Ah. So, I I do a bit of like continuous improvement, and then I also take on projects as well. Yeah. So that at the University of Wolverhampton, which is wow. next to Birmingham for those guys that don't know the UK. And it, it can't be more centre in the middle of England than, than we well, are. So well that gives me that gives me a good idea then. So okay well thanks yeah. thanks for uh yeah thank you. I'm gonna head out now because it's right. um it's it's quarter past five and it's the end <laughs> of my day. <laughs> yeah you bet you all right we'll see you later. Okay bye 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 thank you Eric yeah, and it was sort of, you know, when I, t I actually missed my staff meeting this week to uh, attend this session. Okay. And uh, I told my boss, who's the IT director, I said, you know, what? it's, it's one of the um, thought leaders talking about how virtual is better. Yeah. So he sort of, he was fine with me missing, but I'm sort of feeling a little bit um, self-congratulatory because you're following a lot of the same tools I use. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I look at you as one of the lean leaders. And I feel like I'm following in your footsteps. It was sort of fun to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was well, fun to be a participant while you let it. So yeah. thank you. Well, well, yeah, thank you for being here.